Well there YouTube, that's another heater repair. I have another video on another heater. Uh, this is far than just part without taking the knobs off the cabinet. It should be far enough to work on it. But there is the points. They'll get dirty and need clean and they used to make a special file like for electronic equipment. They actually called it burnishing the points. Always advise don't use sandpaper. If you got a sandpaper, you better clean them off real good because that leaves gunk that just makes more problems. Okay, to get this this far apart, to get this cover off here, I had to take this off the cord. The little thing that goes to the hole, you'll see where your cords kink. Just put it back the same way if you take that off. So it'll go exactly the same way going home because I needed this out of my way. I didn't have enough clearance here. Okay, when I bought this $30 El Cheapo, I'll show the front real quick. I bought it last winter. Actually, it would have been about the end of this winter. It would have been back in February. Well, it always rattled. You just how it tilted, it might stop the rattle. Well, it got worse and worse. Here's what we found. This heater mechanism bolts to the back cover. It's got these little clips where you put it down in there. I know I just turned my skater down. And it bolts here. So this whole heater is supported just on the back. Well, that's kind of cheesy too because this is pretty flimsy tin. And this is stamped in here. So I'm looking for rattles in here. When I first took it apart, I looked for rattling here. Uh, this squeezy, cheapy package. That could probably be fixed with a couple little straps of metal and a couple rivets. Pretty cheesy way to build a tin box, huh? You fold the corners over here and then you don't do nothing. I may modify that with some rivets. But I get up here with the motors mounted a bracket and this is what I find. I don't have any Loctite, so we're going to find some kind of epoxy or glue or something. When we tighten these, they're not going to come loose. That'd make it pretty rattly. And I don't know how I'm going to oil the motor. I do have the little oil thing with the little hose on it, and believe me, this blade was filthy. This is out. In the, this blade was filthy black. It took a clean rag and turned it black with gunk. You know, I used to put a filter on here, but I wouldn't recommend doing things like that, modifying stuff that's not safe. Put some filter material back there or something. But there is my rattle. About all I'll show of this video. Kind of self explanatory. If you ain't got nothing to lose, take it apart. This cover clipped over the one part and the two screws on the bottom held it. Uh, this goes down on a base. Which that goes over there, I should get rid of the base. And if you really had to take the points out, I guess you could take the bolt off. I can only get one knob off. I don't want to break nothing. These are pretty cheap switches down here. And this bottom switch that flex the temperature and fan and everything. I'd hate to break that switch trying to pry the knob off. At least the knob came off for this, but I need to get to the points. Clean it with paper or something real clean. Uh, brown paper, cardboard. I use the back of my emery paper. It's a cloth. I say if you use sandpaper, you can be in for trouble because it leaves stuff on there to make them spark more of it. I think that'd make my fan rattle. I am on telemacro, but and we all know where it was made. I may try to put a couple of rivets here or something on here because there's plenty of clearance this, to make this box more solid, but I think I'm going to worry more about this. Thanks for watching. I may include a small clip at the end with it running. I should have had it running before, but you can about imagine how bad it rattled. Sound like some junky old car with the exhaust falling off rattling. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're going to expand this video a little bit. I took the two screws off the bracket. Carefully set the motor down because it's sitting on those elements. Okay. That's how I'm going to oil it. I'm going to lift it up out of here. And it did have to cut a zip tie that was holding these wires together. We're going to change that. And there was one reason why. Then this bracket slid out. Okay, and this is pretty cheesy and stupid. I marked everything with a marker. See my blue Sharpie marker? When this is slid in here, this is all that holds this heater assembly to the back of the heater. Because I did show these two outer screws 
holds this whole thing in the back cover. So there is nothing holding this from wobbling and sliding back and forth. I'm going to drill a hole and put one of those metal, cheap metal zip screws like for your ductwork because I have enough clearance down there it won't hit anything, won't hit any elements. Look between the two Sharpie marks. I know it's hard to focus. That wire is almost scraped enough to start being bare. I will coat that with a lot of electrical tape. It would have been a matter of time before that shorted out, shorted the motor out, and I would see a spark in here. Now I would see a spark. I want to show one thing down in here. You see that little switch down in there? That runs from the hot part of your element when your element goes through. Do not bypass that. That is like a thermal switch when it overheats and you have to shut the heater off, let it cool down. Do not bypass that. Please. Safety. If this heater overheats, it's going to just fry and catch on fire. That will lift that contact apart down in there. There's a little contact on the point, and that's done by heat, and your heater will shut off. Then you have to uh, turn it off. I've had it happen on high. That was one of my pet peeves about junk like this. You run it on high, and even if it's cold, it could be below zero outside. You run it on high, by the time it shuts off, it trip that circuit breaker, the little circuit point thing instead of just shutting the thermostat off where it was. And I don't care where you had it. If you put it on high and that thing run for any period of time, and it could be cold, it could be cold air, freezing temperature coming in behind it, it would get hot and shut that off. And that was only like halfway on the dial on high. On low, you could turn it all up. So it's another one of them heaters that I run it on low all the time. Get cranky here with this cheap made crap. Well, well, ain't funny, ain't gonna do it. But that's all that holds this. This motor is mounted to this bracket. This bracket slides down in here, slides in there. It slid right out. I can stick it in there and on film. It'll trust me. It'll slide right in there. It only holds this whole heater assembly in there, except that it might rest against the front of the heater. Uh, here's your grill thing that pops out of the front. Nice little tray for your screws, huh? Just in case somebody might have one of these heaters. Comfort zone, they're all different brands. They're all made the same way. But this did have a spark in here, and it was not down here. The spark was coming somewhere in the middle of the heater. Well, that looks about the middle of the heater to me, people. I'd see a spark in there once in a while. Spark, spark. I'd sit here, and I'd look over and see a little small spark. I thought maybe there was some dust on the elements. You get a lot of stuff in the shop, metal shavings, filings, uh, dust from metal dust. It'll collect on your coils and make some sparks. That's how we're going to oil the motor. We're going to oil it from this side. Don't let that oil drip on these elements. I'll have a rag in there, a piece of cardboard. Then I'll oil the back. Just a couple drops in the back of the shaft in the center. Then I'll spin it by hand and be satisfied I got enough oil on it. Uh, don't take your fan blade off unless you really marked everything because it's set at a certain depth. This blade was not this clean, believe me. I reached in there and cleaned the blade until I realized, well, let's start taking apart more. But not to make this video too long, but I did mark Sharpie marker on either side of that little cut. I know this ain't the greatest camera on Telemacro, but if you really look, you can see where that plastic looks cut. I don't actually see the copper wire, but that don't mean electricity can't spark through a little hole. But, back to getting it done. I said, I'm going to drill and put a screw here and hold this bracket in here. I'm not going to rely on this being shoved against the front of the heater and this bracket slid here and that's all that holds this whole thing together. There's plenty of room. It will not touch the elements or anything. I already look, You can look across here. There's plenty of room in there. So, we'll get this thing done and back together. Okay, it's done. It's fixed. I can tip in any direction. This doesn't have that shut off thing. Amazing, huh? Top shop don't have that shut off feature. I looked in there and looked. I'm positive there's not one. Now I can turn it wherever angle I want. No more noise. The more you turn it, the more this cheap knob loosens up. That's the next repair. The cheap little screw goes down in there. put in the description I did have to make that screw shorter the one where I wanted to put that 
sand bracket and put, I put just one screw in it kind of hold it together because this all shoves together if this fits on that housing it all shoves in and then you got the two screws on the back that hold the fan bracket to the back of the heater so I just have one screw in there kind of help hold it together trying to get some of the rattle out but so far no rattle the normal sounds put back to fan only this won't work on fan unless the thermostat's on a little bit I did oil the motor, the excess oil that was around there I took out with a q-tip so it wasn't dripping you get extra oil in there it's just going to gather dirt you can just almost see the also, I run the two fan motor wires around underneath the bracket because they had them running on either side of that bracket wall that was stretching them. I looked at it and set it back in there. And they, when they assembled it, they just did a crappy job. The, I put the wires underneath that bracket, plus I put tape on them because it was stretching one of the wires while with it setting there vibrating and shaking, it was cutting into the wire. If that was short out, would have been the end of it. Thanks for watching.